Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am PD Worski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. In the second video tutorial on features, I want to show you how we rebuild and revert features. But before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at my website, Toronto, Toronto Website Developer.com slash store. Here you can purchase my tutorials as I develop them. They're only $20 and each sale goes to help me to continue to develop these tutorials, keep them free and keep them frequent. As always, the more you buy, the more you save. And if you can't afford the $20, please just leave a thumbs up or comment on YouTube, or please subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate that. Uh, looks like the subscription numbers are dropping a little bit. So I'm trying to make a push to get them back on by creating some tutorials. That said, we're looking at features now. Uh, I'm going to close up this window and head back over to our local host, D7, and we're looking at D7 features. So in the previous video tutorial, we created a feature. We uh, generated it uh, through the interface, and then we copied it over, and we ran into a couple hiccups, but we got it onto what we're calling our production site, D7 Sandbox. And now what we want to do is make some changes on the D7 feature site. Now, what we did not do in the first video tutorial is actually enable this on the D7 feature site. So we want to check that off and save the settings. And the reason why you do that on your development site is so that it can track the changes that you're making to whatever is in this specific uh, feature itself. So with that, I want to head over to content types, new test type, and let's go into manage fields. And so one thing you'll notice here is I've added dog name. So I've got field dog name. And if you look at the feature itself, you may not know this, but this state tells you whether or not it matches kind of what you've created before. And so it's telling us that it's default, but I actually created a new field on it. So that doesn't get picked up unless I add that field to the content type. So before we do that, we're going to change up some stuff here on the text field so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So new field for features is going to become a required field and it's going to be an unlimited field. So we'll save that. And so we've changed some things up now. If I reload this page, we'll see that features actually goes and checks to see is the setting or are the settings on this site still matching what the feature defined. And you can see now it's saying that they're overridden. And if I click on overridden, I can see my field base has changed, my field instance has changed. And again, I can should be able to check that out, but I think you need the diff module or something. Um, let's go ahead and oh. We lock those. Yeah. Okay. That's not what we want. Um, hmm. Hold on a second. Ah, this is what we want. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add features diff. So let's head over and grab our terminal. And I'm just going to go to CDD colon. And we're going to go to WAMP slash www d7 features and drush dl features diff. And we got that. So now we will enable this y. Okay. And now if I go back over here, I can reload this page and I can click on overridden and I get this nice diff of what actually changed. And you'll see here that on the field base, it's now saying I've got uh, the cardinality went from one. So only one value allowed to now minus one. So unlimited. So that's good. That's exactly what we wanted. And on the instance, I went from nothing being required to this field instance now being required. And so it's picking up both of my changes. So that's kind of cool. So first thing we're going to do is let's say I screwed that up. I didn't want to do that. So I can get rid of those, just blow them out of the water by reverting. So I click revert and I actually have to check off my checkboxes here. So revert these guys. And now, okay, don't worry about that. That's the features diff module. Now, if I go into structure content types, oops, I want to click. Go into manage fields. If I look at this new field, it's no longer required. And down here, it goes back to number of values one. So that's kind of the cool thing about features is that it will actively monitor changes on your site. And so that's helpful when you're looking at development to production. Um, the other thing that it can do is it, we can add and rebuild the feature. So you remember at the beginning of this, I went and created the new field uh, dog 
name or something like that. Yep, dog name. And now I want to add that to the content type. So I can do that by going back to my feature. I'm going to click into the content types and I'm going to re not re yeah, I want to recreate. So we're going to recreate this guy. And you'll see here, it's automatically picking up the fact that I have now field dog name on there and it's picking up the new instance. And so that's good. So what we want to do is we want to increment this version, right? Before we had version 1.0, we're actually making a change here and we should record the fact that we are doing that with a new um, minor change on our version number. So again, we're gonna go to advanced options. We see that everything's filled in here. It's auto detected. We already saw that it auto detected and we can generate the feature. So it says it's recreated the feature. And if we go into our directory here, we can go to sites, all modules, custom, LS, go into content types, and you'll see same files as before. And if we look at the content types info file, you'll see that it's listing 7.x 1.0, which is kind of nice. That's exactly what we wanted. So now we would do the same thing as before. Let's just go and we'll copy content types, slash everything in there. I don't need a dash R because it's all the files. I got to go up a bunch. Guess I always could have created some aliases here. Maybe we'll do that next time around. Uh, content types. And that should be good. And now if we go back over here, we reload our page. If we go into features, we might have to clear our caches. So it still says 7.1. So let's go ahead and flush our caches. It still says 7. Point, oh, I'm sorry, 7.1, 1.1. So that's right. So now if we go and we check our content types and we go into new test type, oops, should have gone to manage fields. You can see now we have dog name showing up and we've gone ahead and we've changed on our development site and we've brought it over to our production site. So just a quick recap here, I showed you how features will actually track what's involved in the feature that you have. You just have to make sure that it's enabled and checked off on your development site. So remember here, I didn't have this checked off. We did that right away. Once we did that, features actively monitored my field base and field state. I was able to revert them when I messed up something and didn't want it anymore. Um, and we were able to actually look at those changes using the features diff module. I highly recommend that. And then from there, we went ahead, added a new field, and we added it to our feature by clicking on recreate. It auto picked up the new field. We regenerated, we copied that to production. We're good to go. So that's it for this video tutorial. Hopefully it helped out, made things a little bit clearer. If you have any questions, post them on YouTube. I'd be happy to answer them. And if not, we'll see you for video tutorial three. Thanks very much for watching.